before we start the show, we would like to thank our sponsors for 2024 Beef, Beef Master Education Endowment Fund. Uh, thank you for what you do for the breed, and thank you for supporting our show. SEBA, the Southeastern Beef Master Breeders Association. Uh, don't miss their convention and sale every August. Thank you for supporting the show. Emmons Ranch Beef Masters, Mr. Steve and Mrs. Cindy. They need no introduction. They always breed great cattle, and we just appreciate what you guys do, and thank you for supporting us. CNM Ranches out of Kershaw, South Carolina, the Chick family. Be on the lookout for their sale starting in 2025. Thank you for supporting the show. Lissy's Beef Masters so is another one that doesn't need any introduction. We appreciate what you do for uh, the breed and for our show. Cottage Farms Beef Masters, they have a sale with Clark Jones every year in June. Uh, thank you for supporting our show. Sea Shepherd Beef Masters, thank you for supporting the show out there in Texas. And Jones Beef Masters, uh, last but certainly not least, sell every June. They sell throughout the year. Mr. Clark, thank you for what you do for the breed. Uh, every day and thank you for what you do for our show jcs beef masters jared and kelly strickland out of savannah tennessee always raising great stock uh, thank you for what you do for the show and be on the lookout for their cattle and coming sales this year lastly gnm cattle company out of taylorsville north carolina family owned and operated uh, will be in multiple sales this year as well thank you to all of our sponsors we couldn't do it without you Welcome to Beefmaster Banner. We're your hosts, Josh Morrison and Jared Strickland. How's it going, Jared? That's going good, man. We're slowly getting through this work week. Just trying to just trying to make it to the weekend. That's right. I'm ready well, for it. We've been raining around here, so it's nice to finally have a little sunshine today. But uh we'll just jump right into it. Tonight we've got uh Mr. Mackie Bounds and Mr. Clay Howell of Swing and Bee Beefmasters. How you guys doing? Hey, we're doing great. We're getting rain here in Central Texas, and uh, I promise you, when we get rain in Texas, it's a great day. Uh, no matter what we're doing, we'll stand out in it if we have to. <laughs> well, you guys have a sale coming up. Uh, when this releases, uh, it'll be tomorrow. So I hope it's it's probably going to be a muddy mess around there. I'd, I'd say on Saturday. Well, it. Uh, it, I think it'll be gone by then, and, and this sales facility is set up in such of a way that uh, we'll enjoy the green grass and the sunshine, and uh, I think we'll be able to keep the mud off of our feet. Absolutely. Well, I, and as, as dry as it's been out there for the last, I don't know, year or so, I don't think you'll complain about rain at all, huh? Not at all. <laughs> this, uh, this spring, though, it's been phenomenal. Um, when you get six to eight inches per week, uh, for about a month, uh, you're beginning to wonder, should we start building an ark? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, well, not, it's, uh, it's, I'm not we got more more what's that? I said, I noticed the ways in college station last week, it was really, everything was wet and green. So oh, that's, yeah. that's good. Yes, it was. And we'll maybe really we'll hit on that. Was. But we're real. looking forward. We're looking forward to a great sale. Absolutely. Maybe we'll hit on that. It was good seeing you guys and, and seeing everybody at the committee meetings. Mackie, I know you're uh the chair of a committee. In my opinion, I, I think it was a really good set of meetings. All in all, it seemed like they got a lot accomplished. What do you think? You know, I, I encourage all members uh to participate in that meeting. I love our convention and I want everybody at the convention, but if you really want to learn about the beef master breed and you want to learn about becoming a better breeder uh, and have that opportunity setting down one-to-one -one with people, our mid-year meetings is where, it's, where it all takes place. You're in the committee meeting, you learn from that. And no matter if you're a member of a committee or not, you can go and set in on the meeting. And I'm always leaving with a little bit better education on how to be a better breeder uh, when I leave those mid-year meetings. Well, and I always meet someone that, that I've never met before every time I go. And it's just an enjoyable time. You're absolutely right. And uh, next year, I hope we can meet some new folks. Absolutely. Uh, that we've never met. Yep. <laughs> absolutely. Um, kind of getting into the to what, what we're going to talk about today. Um, 
So we're, we're wanting to talk about swing and B. Uh, how about just start with um, each of you, the history, uh, you both of your personal history in the cattle business, and then maybe even go into how how swing and B started, and and let's just talk about that a little bit. All right, I will uh, I will start out, and then I'll pass it off to Clay. But uh, I got into the cattle world in 1992. Um, I went in it uh, for a business purpose, owned my own company. My CPA said, hey, you might want to look at a way that you can get a write-off and you have land, and I think you would enjoy the cattle business. Why don't you give it a try? And uh, probably the best advice my CPA ever gave me because he put me into something that, I absolutely love and I enjoy. Now, I didn't get into the Beefmaster world until 1996. And that happened when my son came home from school and said, hey, I want to show cattle. And I was happy that he wanted to show cattle. I figured I'd go buy a Charlay or Angus. He said, no, I want a Beefmaster. Well, I had some Beefmaster once upon a time, and I promised myself I'd never own them again. And I think they were possessed with the devil, but as it turned out, it was just a, a, a bad, it was just a bad set of cattle. Okay, so uh, I I was around the cattle a little bit, around the people, and the more I was around both, the more I enjoyed the beefmaster cattle, and I started buying a few, and I was raising some F1 tiger stripes, which I still absolutely love. I think they're great animals, but uh, I gradually got out of that and worked my way in uh, to the Beefmaster world. And I became very active in the Beefmaster business in about 1999 and 2000. And um, I started working on my genetics. Um, that was the, I, I started out on the wrong foot, okay? Hindsight's 2020. And as I look back, I thought, you know, I'd have been so much better off if I had sat down and done some um, figuring on the front side as far as the direction I wanted to go. If I would have talked to more people, uh, I'd have gotten into the business for a whole lot less money. But I started out just buying one here, one there. Uh, I just had a, uh, a little bit of everything and not much of anything. And um, then... And I started waking up to the fact that I went about this the wrong way. Well, let me tell you this. It costs a whole lot more money to get out of something you did wrong than to do it right the first time. <laughs> and I learned my lesson the hard way. But uh, my ranch has uh, grown into a, a very elite ranch. Um, I'm proud of the ranch. And it's a beautiful place. I live on the ranch. Uh, it's a beautiful place to come home to uh, when I leave the corporate world and go across that cattle guard and I hear the clanging and the, the wheels on it. I shut the world behind me and, uh, and I enjoy life. But uh, the ranch continues uh, to change with time. Uh, I'm never satisfied of where I'm sitting today because I want to be better tomorrow. And that's one of the reasons I like those mid-year meetings. I'm listening and I'm, I'm learning how we can improve when we get home. And just like this last time, Clay and I sat down, we talked about some things that I'd heard during the committee meeting, the things that we may be able to do to make uh, Swing and Bee Ranch a, a better breeder of are the greatest cattle in the world as far as I'm concerned. And um, I got involved in our breed association, serving on committees, uh, serving on the board and as officers. I was blessed to be president for two years. And um, it, it's been an experience that will be with me until the end of life. Uh, and the people, I cannot say enough good about the people. Um, great people. Now, is there any bad apples? There's bad apples everywhere you go, you know? And, uh, but I, I will tell you this, 
they're few and far between when it comes to the beef master nation. And um, guys, I can talk for a long time about <laughs> my love for my rat and for my breed, but I've got a guy here with me uh, that's actually been around the beef master cattle longer than me. And I'm just blessed to have him as our, our ranch manager. So, uh, Clay, it's your turn. Right. Thank you, Max. Yeah, so I guess it started for me. I, I guess I was born into it in Arizona. Uh, grandfather and dad both run some pretty big ranches out there in southern Arizona. Grandpa ran around 700 head of Brangus cows with Brayford bulls on them. And dad run about 400 head of F1s, I guess. And he also can't remember whether we had Brayford bulls on those cows or not. But anyway, we ended up uh, going up to Snowflake, Arizona one time, and there was a Beefmaster breeder up there, and they were called Flake, Flake Beefmasters, I believe. And it was late 70s, I guess, and bought a couple of bulls from those guys and actually saw a cowman there. I believe it was a cowman. I was just a little kid, but um, Dad picked it up. And so from then on, we started coming to Texas to buy our bulls and stuff to turn on those cows. And then, um, I guess, in the mid 80s, I guess, I got elected to the junior board and served on the board for, I don't know, a couple of years, I guess, and traveled back and forth from Arizona to here. And I fell in love with Texas, which is not hard to do when you come from Arizona. And uh, um, then ever since then, I've either had Beefmaster Influence cattle or purebred cattle or both at the same time and been been at it ever since. So that's about it for me. Well, that's that's very interesting. And some things that stuck out to me, especially when Mackie was talking about his history, mm -hmm. is how how you mentioned well a couple things is how you mentioned that you thought you'd never get back into the breed um with with the bad apples that you had, but also making those mistakes would you I, I would probably venture to guess you would think that made you a better purebred beef master breeder in the long run it did cost you money but I, I would venture to guess that you would say that right oh absolutely i mean you don't normally make the same mistake twice and, and um i have a vision now i know where i want the ranch to go and um now, if something comes better, I'm open, but I'm not making the mistakes again that I once made. And it's made made me a better cattleman. You got to understand, when I was nine years old, I told my mother, and I lived in Mississippi at the time, I said, Mom, I'm going to have my own ranch one day and live in Texas. Now, I didn't remember saying that until I brought my mother to the ranch. And she said, son, said, uh, your dream came true. I said, what do you mean? And she told me what I had said. And it, it was kind of a sobering thought to me that as a kid, I wanted to do this. And then I was able to see where I was at today, understood the mistakes I'd made, not just in the cattle world, through life, you know? We've all goofed up. When I was a teenager, I was crazy. When I was in my twenties, I was nuts. But um, <laughs> you, uh, you mature and uh, you, uh, it's uh, m mistakes just makes makes us better people, and yeah. especially if you accept it right. Uh, sometimes you have to laugh at yourself, you know. <laughs> I agree, one hundred percent. I would agree, Mackie, that it, making mistakes absolutely makes you a better person. Unfortunately, it's expensive uh, in this business when you do make those mistakes. But you're right; you, you generally don't make mistakes twice. Uh, in this type of business. That's for sure. And uh, if you do, uh, you might want to check yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a note before we know, go ahead. I was just going to say, before we move into the next, um, subject that we're going to talk about, I would, I'll, this is kind of off subject, but I would like to see if you guys would, would, say what what do you think the biggest thing is since you've come into the breed that we've improved i know there's tons of things but what's one or two things that that you think has just greatly improved this breed into 2024 from where you started all right i 
people, to, my thought is we have finally decided who the end user of our product is, and that's the family sitting around the table uh, having a good steak. And we started raising our cattle uh, with that purpose in mind. Um, one thing, I'm all about performance, and I hope we get to talk more about that because I believe that's the biggest change we've made as a breed. Uh, we have focused uh, more on performance than we've ever focused. Now, I do have one fear of that. I don't want us to put all of our focus there. Uh, we got to remember uh, the train that brought us to where we're at, and that is we are a maternal breed. Uh, that mama cow is the greatest thing in the world. But the mama cows raise great bulls, too, and they raise meat. And our, our breed has finally woke up to that fact. And I think you've got some breeders uh, that are leaders that is showing the way, the right way, that we do not lose our phenotype. We keep a beautiful animal but we have performance to go with it. What do you think, Clay? Well, so back back in the late 70s, early 80s, when we kind of got into business pretty deep, um, I guess the biggest thing for me would be uh, moderation in our cattle, right? So back in the day, they were as big as you could make them. The bigger, the better. And, you know, we've cleaned those cattle up uh, so much throughout the years and made a more user-friendly user product to me where um, we're doing better with heterosis on other breeds as far as crossbreeding and, and raising more more beef on that side of the uh, spectrum. But then just like Mackie said, uh, fertility is number one in our, in our cow herd. So that'd be something for me, just how we evolved and moderated things and got them back down to a more user-friendly product. I'd agree with that. I think that's some some really good really good points and and you know i living over here in north carolina excuse me i've been told by people you know hey you when you say you raise beef masters all they can think of because they've not seen them are these old i say old i'm gonna say back in the i don't know early 90s probably where they're like man they had big cat you know you had all kind of problems with things and um now you, you, it's just a matter of getting people like that to realize that we're not we're not the same that we were back then. You're right. Um, kind of moving forward, I think we lost Jared. Uh, but anyways, kind of moving forward. What are some of your donors? Um, in your donor pen, since your sales here, right? You know, tomorrow. What are some cows, some donor cows that you really are standouts currently that, that you guys may want to talk about? So, you know, um, <clears throat> of course, I'm a transplant in the Mackey's herd, so he had everything there and set up for me and ready to roll when I got there. But um, Dotsy has been, uh, Swinging Bee Dotsy has sure been a, a home run for us. Um, we push her pretty hard. She's She's getting a little long in the tooth now, but she has done an excellent job for us at Swing and Beat. Um, also, oh, EMS Heartache, that's a cow that really, really does. That's an Emmons cow that Mackie picked up. Um, she she does an outstanding job. Very, very fertile cow. Um, if you're looking for pedigree and fertility, that would there's a key right there. Um, and then... We've got another cow named Ambrosia that's out of a pole tiger bull um, that is another solid cow. She produces well. You can typically breed her the same way time and time again, and it's always a hit. So that's pretty much our, our I guess, our home runs, our easy go-tos, you know, to, to make something that's a, that's a good product that's sellable. You got any up and coming ones you're really looking at? Well, so, and of course, in our sale on Saturday, I could say just look at the whole catalog, right? Get away with it, maybe. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but I've sure got some some picks. There's a like lot one is that an H bar the fix we bull a bull we picked up down at the Advantage sale, which is Solution Sun, and that lot number one heifer had a Dotsie in him is short. She looks just like her mother. Um, 
and that's sure going to be a good one. Block two, you can do the same thing. That's another H bar and or the fix and in EMS heartache. Um, so he's working well with our cattle. Um, then we've got a lot five that's a bravado and ambrosia that is good. Um, oh, is that the one you wanted to talk about, Maggie? Oh, okay. I took that one away from Mackie. I mean, I can just keep going and going and going on this stuff, guys. If you, you know, and then of course you scoop down one more and go to Teton. You know, a Teton out of a secret cow, uh, really nice, really nice heifer. All right, I'm gonna quit and give the phone to Max and let him do it. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, he's right. There's a bunch of them, but uh, Teton, yeah, that's an SWB Teton. Um, he's, he's a working bull, but he just puts his stamp on everything. Smooth, moderate, uh, good in performance, but lot number nine in our cell, uh, she's an absolute, uh, knockout. You got Teton on the top, heartache down on the bottom. Um, another one is lot seven. Um, this is out of Teton. And then next gen, Miss Phoebe. Now I kind of like this one because Clay and I, we've had an ongoing argument since his first day at the ranch. He did not like NG Miss Phoebe. I loved her. Uh, she was out of McAllister, an SWB league of her own. So this lot is an SWB lot all the way through. And it shows, this is a picture of what our ranch philosophy is. You'll see a moderate frame animal with good performance. Now, I wanna stress something about performance. When I say good performance, I'm not always talking about the top 5%. My philosophy is you stay in the top 30%. And um, just like uh, lot seven, a dollar T is 99.44, dollar M is 17.77. So you're not looking uh, at top 5%. You're looking at more top 20 and top 15%. When you keep it there, you keep the phenotype too. And if we're not careful, we can wind these animals so tight until we're going to lose our phenotype. So I, I like to stress to breeders, let's keep, let's not forget what brought us here. Beautiful animals. Beef master are beautiful animals. People going down the road, I've had them stop before and say, what kind of cow is that? That's the prettiest cow I've ever seen. Of course, I'm proud to say, hey, it's beef master. Come on, I'll sell you some. <laughs> um, lot 36, uh, that's a pretty special lot because that is a full sister to Teton. Uh, it's out of Summit and, and Dotsy. Um, with a 4.6% IML, top 30% in dollar T. I mean, he has it. And, and he he reminds me a lot of tea time, but on the female side. She's going to be a moderate frame animal, or she is a moderate frame animal. And um, she'll probably top out at 1150, 1200 pounds and be able to produce. And I think that's important. Uh, you have lot 39, uh, going back to Teton and EMS heartache. That's the best buy I ever made in my life, but I won't say a whole lot about it in case Randy Mason uh, is uh, going to have an opportunity to hear this. I don't want him angry at me. But uh, <laughs> again, you'll see the dollar T and the dollar M there in the top uh, 30%. And the purpose of that is uh, keep keep the phenotype. So what you will see at our ranch, you'll see me using bulls uh, that are in the top 5% of dollar T and dollar M, but I will use them on cattle that is got the phenotype and might not have as much performance. So I'm raising animals that's sitting there in the middle uh, with the look and the performance. And then if somebody buys that animal and they want to take it a notch further on performance, they will be able to do that and not lose the look. Then I have some low performance bulls 
uh, scores. When I say low performance, I'm talking about dollar uh, T and dollar M. And I'll put them on high performance females to once again produce there in the middle in that top 20, top 30 percent. And you can do the same thing with those cattle. So I might have a little different philosophy than some people. Uh, and the reason of it is I don't like an animal to get too tight and not look like a beef master. And that's what we try to do to avoid that. But these are a few of the lots, like Clay said, there's bunches and bunches of them. I could uh, talk about each one of them in a positive way, of course. But I will tell you this, I'm not selling anything Saturday that I wouldn't keep. And Clay can vouch for that because there was a few that was supposed to have been here that I finally said, no, I'm keeping. And <laughs> um, <laughs> there'll, there'll be a future donor for me. Well, and I really like the. I, got, I like the, uh, you know, you just talk about your breeding philosophy. You know, it's, I like how you're talking about staying balanced with those DPDs because I think if you push yourself too much to the extreme, sometimes you find your problems. So I really like that you. Yep. I don't think we need to run out of one ditch into another. Okay. No, no, I agree. And I, I like your idea, just like Jared said, talking about your breeding philosophy. I really like the idea of how you're doing the dollar T and dollar M animals, putting low ones on high ones, high ones on low ones, because just because they may have a lower dollar T or dollar M doesn't mean necessarily that they're going to have a subpar animal, you know, a calf. It just mean there just may be, other things in the past year to, you know, let's face it, each calf, each bull, each cow, don't matter what they're out of. At some point, you're going to have an outlier somewhere that's, that may just produce like crazy. I really like what you're saying. And, and also not losing yeah. the phenotype. Well, I think just like this lot 39, I mean, it's not blow out the top dollar, three dollar M top 30%. But it had a 10.97 ribeye, perfect. Had a 4.52 IML. And so you can see the individual performance in these cattle. And you can see that throughout my catalog. But then you look at dollar $10, and people go, well, they're not sky high. Well, there's a reason. That's the way we bred them. Right. And uh, but we kept performance in mind, too. And that's why you've got good performance in these cattle on an individual basis. Right, right. And, and, you know, too, going back to what you said about phenotype, I, I agree that we don't need to lose phenotype because you're right. These are some beautiful animals, especially these, you know, these females. I think sometimes we get too, sometimes people get too worried about making them look too Angusy. Almost, I, I, don't, I know that's a terrible thing to say, but they almost look tubular from time to time. And, and we lose that deep sided, you know, we lose a lot of that brisket. I mean, we lose a lot of what a beef master is. And so I, I love what you're saying about that. Yeah. One other thing you will see us doing, we have a lot of SWB donors, but also just like EMS, I use theirs. I use CJs. I use CFs, both of them. And I believe in bringing new blood in because if you sit there and you keep using your blood over and over and over, you're just getting a more narrow door to improve your, uh, improve your herd through. And when I bring in outside blood and I start mixing it, what I have found there's heterosis in doing that in our own breed. And plus it's allowing me to improve my herd and i'm not too proud to use somebody else to improve my herd that's why i married the wife i did uh she improved me okay <laughs> i promise <laughs> well all of our yeah, all I of our like, should have <laughs> yeah that's right uh, i kind of like what you mentioned about i know me and josh has even talked about that in the past about getting heterosis within our own breed you know i think i think you're on to something there because a lot of times you can bring in outside blood like you're talking about and get a really nice pop on those calves. I see a perfect example of it, Jerry, is uh, McAllister. McAllister is, is 
comes from what people call the FBA world. Uh, and then I put him on what people call BBU cattle, higher house. I mean, they're gorgeous. And we've got some out here in, in the lots right now to sell that anybody would take. Uh, and it was done by crossing. And we've got a, uh, a, a better, a better animal for it. Absolutely. 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 Now your sale is, um, Saturday, May 18th at what time? 10 30. 10 30 at what place? At the 10 rock ranch at Salado, Texas. It's about two miles off of interstate 35. And let me say this for those of you that will be on the internet. Uh, when I say 10 30, I hold Anthony Mahosky to 10 30. Now we may start talking at 10 o'clock so we get all that talking out of his blood. <laughs> but, uh, those of you, uh, the premier livestock auction, uh, site Saturday at 10 30, we will sell our first animal. I try to start every sale that we have with the national anthem. I love my nation and I believe in our nation. I know our nation is in trouble today, but I still love our nation. So we started with that. And as soon as that song ends, our first lot's in to sell. And uh, we'll make it a fun day, even for you that's on the internet. Sounds like it's going to be a good time. I guess kind of wrapping up uh, with the time we got here, we always like to ask this. Uh, Mackie and Clay, what would be y'all's uh, advice for a new breeder that's listening today? Well, I've kind of given you my advice uh, by the mistakes I made. Setting down and, and making a plan. Talk to other people. And don't talk to just one. Talk to several. And I think that's important. Right now, Texas A&M knows that they've made some mistakes with their herd and they are uh, going around to different sales just to visit and to talk and to learn about what they need to do and i think that's important for every new breeder to do is visit before they go spend a bunch of money to only find out they did it the wrong way and we have sales managers very knowledgeable uh and i would advise them to talk to them uh, as long as they recognize a sales manager has a job to do and um, i know they're very intelligent we have uh, those that are helping us in this sale uh, mike green and bruce robin been around the breed forever our sales manager is trey shear uh, probably one of the most knowledgeable people I've ever met. Uh, and I would advise breeders to talk and visit with them, learn, learn all they can learn. What do you think, Clay? Yeah, I guess my, my piece of advice would be don't, don't start in a hole, right? So don't, don't force yourself to, to buy something that you don't really want and try and breed your way out of that hole. Um, take your time, spend your money if you need to, to start right with the right kind of pedigree and the right kind of cow. That way you're you're up front and you're moving forward. If you start down, you know, kind of low, um, it takes you a couple of years to get out of it. So I, I would say start 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 right would be my my uh, statement. I guess just get it done. Got one thing. Uh, spend your money wisely. There are times when you may need to spend twenty thousand dollars for a good donor prospect. But that doesn't mean you spend that kind of money on every one of them. Uh, some of my best donors, I won't say which one, but I bought for $2,500. And it's, it's unbelievable. And, but it ha happened because we've done our homework. We studied the animals. So I just want to encourage our new breeders to go out and try.
do quite the opposite. If y'all heard yeah, a weather warning, it's a weather warning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree with uh, everything you said and, and, um, both of you said, and it was, this has been a really good episode. I, I think people will get a lot out of it. Um, I know we were talking about your sale and your cattle, but you guys brought in a lot more to that than you'd ever know as far as e explaining to people, you know, breeding philosophies and, and just bringing in a different perspective that maybe people don't know. So we really appreciate y'all doing that. Yeah, it must definitely. Well, it was thank, very enjoyable. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, it's been enjoyable for us. And um, if you don't make it to the sale or get online at the sale, uh, we'd love for you to come to our ranch anytime. Uh, our ranch will be your ranch when you come. I've got an apartment in the barn. I've got two empty bedrooms. And I bet you Clay even has a couple. Uh, we'll make you have a fun time. That's awesome. Yeah, guys, I got one more thing to add. I just want to give you guys a, a pat on the back for what you're doing with this podcast thing and help promoting the breed and reaching out to people and, and putting something on the air for people to listen to and hopefully gain some knowledge from you guys are doing a great job. We really appreciate sure that. Appreciate Clay. That. Yeah. It means a lot to, to hear folks say that. Cause you know, if, if we don't get feedback, we don't know how we're doing. So, so, uh, we really, <laughs> we really appreciate the feedback and, um, you mentioned Bruce Robbins helping with the sale. And as everyone knows, it's no secret. Bruce has had some health trouble and I know he listens to the podcast. We haven't mentioned it, but Bruce, we're praying for you, buddy. And, uh, we all love you and we're here for you if you need us. Amen. Amen. But, uh, we'll see everybody on the next episode and y'all have a good day. We appreciate it. All right. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, we want to thank everybody for listening to the Beef Master Banner podcast. Uh, please know that we are on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and we are on YouTube. Just search Beef Master Banner. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. We love hearing from you, um, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.